these Scottish Cup heavyweights have old scores to settle. In this latest chapter, who will move one step closer to etching their name on football's oldest trophy? Yes, welcome to the second half of our Scottish Cup Sunday. What a cracker this one promises to be. The heart of Midlothian against Celtic live from Edinburgh in Sky's stunning high definition and on Sky Go for mobiles. Well, it's all falling into place for Celtic now. They are finally top of the Premiership and they've just made it through to the last 32 of the Europa League. Hearts aren't too, doing too badly either. They beat the other half of the old firm here just last week to push nine points clear, a massive nine points clear in the Championship. Now, I'm delighted to say I'm joined here at Tyne Castle by two Scottish Cup winners, Neil McCann, who won it with Hearts, and the Hibernian manager, Alan Stubbs, who won it with Celtic, of course. Alan, Celtic haven't been entirely convincing this season, but are they finally getting there now? I, I think so. I think, you know, everybody will look at it and it was maybe it was a, a slower start than what everybody would have liked. But when you look at it, you know, they're through to the next stage of the Europa League, you know, the top of the league again, they're in the semi-final of the, of the Cup and they're still in the Scottish Cup, you know, so it's not too bad. Are they ready for the challenge of Tyne Castle? <laughs> they will be. You know, they've, they've, they've had some, some, some big games lately. You know, this this will be a bit different. This is what they haven't been, what they haven't had for, a, for, a, for at least a year. And, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a test today. I think that's one thing they'll get today. Um, it'll be, a, I think that's got the makings of a really exciting game. I think there'll be goals in the game. Um, and this will be a test and all for hearts today. Now, the Scottish Cup is normally the be-all and end-all for Hearts, but of course there's a different season with them being in the Championship with you at Hibs and also Rangers. So do you think, Neil, that they might see the Cup as a distraction this year? No, I, I don't think you can ever see the Scottish Cup as a distraction. But No, absolutely not. Even in the Championship? No, absolutely not. The Scottish Cup's such a special trophy and having been lucky enough to win it five times, I know what it feels like and I know it's, it's something you always remember. The Hearts players and staff and fans will not think this is any way a distraction. They're going brilliantly in the league and it's about momentum. They're playing against Celtic. They lost against Celtic in the League Cup and if Osmond So would have scored the penalty, it might have been different. And I know they eventually ran out um, quite comfortable losers on, on scoreline, but we'll see how far they've come now. Because game by game, Hearts seem to be getting stronger. They're more game aware, they're more physically ready. And without doubt, this is a different side, men mental-wise, uh, physically-wise, and game awareness-wise, when the, the team that lost here so heavily in the Scottish Cup the last time, last year, 7-0. So um, we'll get a gaze to see how far Hearts have come, and this is one that they will relish. Well, Hearts form could hardly be any better. As you mentioned, they beat Rangers here last week. They're the only club in Scotland not to have lost a league game. They've won seven out of seven at home across the four SPFL divisions. They have won the most games, scored the most goals and conceded the fewest. Now, Osmond So, you mentioned there, uh, who's been a tremendous goal scorer for them, scored the win at Ibrox. He's injured at the moment. Where are the goals in this team without him? Where are the main threats? Interesting that young Keatings has been given a shout to play up front. Um, hasn't started the game from uh, from September, so he's come off the bench the last last few games for Hearts, but um, he has to find goals. But the guys, Billy King and um, Jamie Walker and Holt, the three young boys in behind, Keatings will be crucial. I like this boy, Jamie Walker. I know it, when, he, when he broke through the sign, he was coming through the ranks, everybody thought <coughs> this kid was going to explode. He was going to challenge John Robertson for goal scoring records, but he's been played wide. But what he does have is explosive pace, he's direct, he takes people on. Um, he might not be absolutely goal laden, but he's a threat. And Celtic, because the poor bodies forward, will be vulnerable at times in the, in the full back areas. And this is where this kid operates. Well, this will be an emotional homecoming for the Hearts fan in the Celtic team. Injury restricted him to just one appearance in three and a half years until he made a stunning comeback with first Celtic this season and then Scotland.
Craig Gordon, who's returned to fitness with Celtic. It's been one of the great tales in Glasgow this season. He's back in Scotland's goal after a four-year gap. That is an amazing story. It's not written off completely. Mm. Career over, we thought. There was very few people, and probably out with my very close friends and family, ever thought that was, was possible. That was the one thing that I, I kept with me when I was doing all my rehab. I knew if I could get my fitness right, the goalkeeping and, and the ability to, to play at that level was, was still there. Did you have a lump in your throat? Yeah, that was maybe a good thing that I didn't stand there in the, for the anthems and then look up at my family in the stand. Um, you know, that, that would have been quite an emotional thing to try and get through and then concentrate in the game. But I did have a turn around and, and look up at the stand and, and see the people that had supported me through it. When I look back to, to see how many caps I got, number 41 will be a, a special number. Replacing Fraser Foster, you know, that must have been a quite intimidating. The fans loved him and of course that makes it a difficult thing to come in and try and replace somebody who was, was loved as much as he was. I've been happy with the way I've been playing so far this season and my challenge now is to maintain that and to try and improve uh, as the season goes on. Hearts under Robbie Nielsen, how impressed have you been with the job that he's done? He's the perfect type to be management material. He's very calm, very level-headed and they've won a lot of games um, and, and once you get on a roll like that the, the confidence goes through a team and, um, and and they're riding on the crest of a wave at the moment. Would you have a Scottish Cup winner's medal had it not been for him? Who knows, who knows, um, he's a, an amazing tackle, it was a great piece of defending that definitely contributed one way or another to us, us eventually picking up that trophy. You know the Hearts mentality, what will they be thinking about Celtic coming to their place on Scottish Cup Day? Yeah, they'll be looking forward to it. So are we. And there's not many ties out there that you could guarantee a, a full house at, at any stadium at the top of the two leagues to, to go head to head. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait for it. Well, what a fantastic story, a fantastic guy and a fantastic professional. That patella tendon injury was horrible for him, but he's overcome it now. It wasn't a cruciate. Uh, he's overcome it now. And Alan, how impressed have you been with him over the years? I think first and foremost, it's I think everyone's delighted that he's back in football. Yeah. You know, he's he was a, a huge talent at, at one point, in, you know, and before he actually came back, there was talk of him coming down to Everton to, to train. Um, but I think his injury prohibited that. So David Moyes fancied to yeah, he did. To Everton? When yeah, he there? did, and I think his injury stopped him from coming down, really. So it's great to see him back. He's, you know, he's... he's, he's the transformation into, into him being a number one at Celtic has been quite seamless, to be honest. And he's he's done really well, you know, and it's, and it's great to see him back. He's a presence. Yeah, he certainly has been an absolutely fantastic player. This place is crackling. There's always an electric atmosphere at Tancastle. Craig Gordon will know better than anybody here. And kick off in this our second cup tie of the afternoon is next. What are you in for? It's a Scottish Cup Sunday on Sky Sports. Earlier, Rangers beat Kilmarnock. Who will join them in tomorrow's draw on Sky Sports News HQ? How are the managers feeling? Here comes Ronnie Dial of Celtic and Hearts' Robbie Nielsen. Robbie, how do you go about beating the Scottish champions today? It's going to be very difficult. You know, they're a fantastic team. So we know we have to work hard and we have to try and stick to the game plan. And, and if we can do that, then we've got a chance. It's going to be a very tough game, of course, but uh, it's a fantastic, uh, good game as well. We are looking forward to, uh, for a long time now to, to play this game. So, um, so we will see. I hope we, we're going to win the game. We had a great result last week for a good week's training. Then we're at home in front of our, our home crowd. So, yeah, the boys are confident, but they know it's going to take a lot of hard work. We know what you're going to meet. Of course, that's uh, that's important. But the players have played against them many times, so um, some of them. Uh, we're comfortable that we are good prepared and uh, we're up for the game. 
Well, Celtic beat Hearts earlier in the season. That was in the League Cup, but this time is different. It's at Tyne Castle, and Hearts have the strongest home record in Scotland. What an atmosphere! Go on, go on, go on. And Davy Proven and Ian Crocker are right in the thick of it. Yes, Tyne Castle has got that special feel to it today. That special big game feel. It was the same here last weekend when Hearts beat Rangers. Now the other half of the old firm are in town and the faithful followers of Hearts and Celtic are more than ready for the tie of the round in the Scottish Cup. Hearts make two changes from that Rangers game. Kevin McCarty and Sufian El Hasnawi are both injured. Adam Eckersley and James Keatings come in. Keatings started his career at Celtic. Robbie Nilsson is also without his top scorer, Osman So, and his captain, Danny Wilson. Morgara Gomez has the armband. Jamie Walker's partner is due to give birth today, but it hasn't happened yet. Celtic are without Charlie Mulgrew, injured against Salzburg, so there's a rare start for Nia Beaton. Callum McGregor and Lee Griffiths make way for James Forrest and John Guidetti. The Swedish striker has been a revelation with ten goals in the last nine games. Jason Denier is still sidelined. There's a Tyne Castle return for Craig Gordon. Hearts have 16-year-old Sean McCurdy and 17-year-old Nathan Flanagan on their bench, plus two 18-year-olds. Chris Comment is again a sub for Celtic. He's scored seven goals against Hearts, five of them here. Well, he's the man for Celtic just now. John Guidetti's remarkable burst of ten goals, including one against Hearts in the League Cup. Four years ago this month, James Keating sat on the Celtic bench here at Tyne Castle, but a cruciate ligament injury not long after wrecked his dreams. Robbie Nilsson's team have performed so very admirably, and they rise to this big occasion. Only Dyler has heard all about the Tyne Castle experience. He's about to witness it for himself. Willie Collum was in charge of the League Cup tie between the teams earlier in the season and Celtic's 7-0 Scottish Cup win here last season. The leaders of the Championship face the leaders of the Premiership. It has the makings of a classic Cup tie. We are ready for action and there should be plenty of it, David. Yeah, I mean, I think Celtic know what's required of them today. They're playing against the Hearts side that are going well. A hard side that has had eight days rest since they beat Rangers here last weekend. So Celtic are going to have to be at it today. I do think the atmosphere in the ground, and it is fabulous this afternoon, will lift the Celtic boys. But they're going to have to play well and, and earn anything they get today. A year ago this weekend, Celtic thrashed Hearts 7-0 here. They were 5-0 up at half time. But it's a different Hearts this time around. Full of confidence. And the feel-good factor is almost off the scale. Pallado, the Spaniard, who's come into the side for the last couple of games and really impressed. But then he has played in the top flight in Spain. And the Ambrose again deputising for Jason Denier. Put under immediate pressure by Keatings. I think he could have knocked it back to, to Craig Gordon early. A little bit of hesitation was costly there. I'm not sure whether Craig Gordon wanted or whether he shouted. Well, we can expect this first five, ten minutes to be pretty frantic. Hearts on the front foot with Jason Holt and Jamie Walker. Here's Morgaro Gomez. First Turk. Patterson. There's an opening here. Four Keatings, but it sticks with Gordon. Got a little bit lucky here, James Keatings, with the, the, the break of the ball. It's not the best crossing. Gets stuck between Keatings and Ambrose, and he did well to dig it out of his feet as quickly. Couldn't find the inside of either post, but a typical bright start you'd expect from Hearts on, a, on their own ground here today. Hearts do have a 100% record at Tyne Castle this season, but it should be tested today. Gomez. Eckersley replacing the injured McCatty. Sent into the stand by Effie Ambrose. It's 
a very open Scottish Cup already with five Premiership teams already out and another one due to go on Tuesday night when Inverness and St Mirren replay. Holt. Gomez. Beaton was quickly upon him. Eckersley. Gomez, who won the Scottish Cup with Dundee United. Tayado, but it's screened by Ambrose. to probe Forrest <laughs> one ball from Emilio Izaguirre yeah just a little bit of a misjudgment there from the, the left back was in a really good position to to cross from as well only Dyla targeting a domestic treble Took them a while to hit the top spot in the league, but now they're there. They're likely to stay there. And they play their game in hand in midweek against Tony Thistle. Hearts nine points clear at the top of the championship, unbeaten in the league. 12 wins, two draws. Celtic a few times in his Rangers days and won the Scottish Cup twice with them. Keating slipped. Greg Gordon, back where it all began for him. Here's Beaton. Some Holt's presence forced Van Dyke to go back to Gordon. Scott Brown. Former Hibbs man. A little bit heavy with the past year, James Forrest. I'm not sure that James Forrest would welcome Adam Matthews going beyond them all day. James Forrest ideally wants isolated against the fullback. They may not be in the same division at the moment, these two, but they're still seeing plenty of each other, having also met in the League Cup this season. Celtic won that 3-0 in Glasgow's East End, but uh, generally, Robbie Nilsson has made an excellent start to his management career. It's underway by McKay. Forrest came off Walker, made it comfortable for Alexander. Payado for Billy King, and Dyke sorted him out, and there could be a break on here. Oh, there's a car coming out. 
coming in from the side there, Gomez on, on Scott Brown. Just wonder how much of the, the ball that he got there, the midfielder. Previous to that, he looked at oh, dear. Oh, he's off. Rocaro Gomez showed an early red card. And Hearts down to ten men already. And surprisingly, Robbie Nielsen not happy with the decision. Scott Brown breaking here. Well, he's come in from the side, but his foot has gone over the top of the ball. I think it, it, it's fortunate there's no contact there. The referee's deemed it to be reckless. Scott Brown's fortunate that he hasn't caught him badly. A serious setback for Hearts there. Captain for the day. Sent off. Here's Beaton. So they have an advantage already. Some pass from Brown for Forrest. And some block from Eckersley. Yeah, a terrific block from Adam Eckersley, but has a good, but a little bit of rearranging to do here. Lovely ball to, to get Forrest in the, the crossing position. Eckersley made up a lot of ground there. Stefan Johansson will take the corner. The ricochet will uh, take it away for a goal kick. Yeah, the double with. Well, what corner? decision this for, for Willie Collum and you know it's a modern day red card Gomez leaves the ground comes over the top of the ball Willie Collum has deemed it to be dangerous and I, I don't think Gomez can argue with that so Hearts down to 10 men with less than 10 minutes on the clock a challenging task just became a little harder for the championship leaders. Here's Matthews. Payado. Walker. Just tickled away by Forrest. Going to struggle to, to get wits now, Hearts, because Jason Holt has dropped in beside Payardo. One up top, Keating still up top, 4-4. Four, 4-4-1 four. Four, four, now, still two banks of four, though, so Celtic still have the work cut out, breaking Hearts down here. Going to be more difficult if, when Hearts get possession. That's a free kick for Gavetti. And McCollum irking the Hearts fans again. Great deal in that for me. I think he tries to pull out the challenge. Either way, this is within range here for, for Celtic to get a shot on target. Cadetti appears to fancy it. No wonder with his goal scoring record. It's a nice range here to, to get up and back down again. And what Celtic have to make sure is that they follow this in. If he can get something even to, to dip in front of Neil Alexander, there's always a chance of a spill here. Focused. Off the wall for a corner. Well, did its job. Not sure what his complaint is there, John Gadetti. Stokes will take this corner. Ambrose and Van Dyke. And Beaton in there with Gadetti. And Forrest. Stokes towards that near post and those Turk had to send it away. Well defended, really good corner from, from Anthony Stokes. Terrific pace in this, comes in really flat as well.
Stefan Johansson's turn to deliver for Celtic. Very crowded in there. Matthews sends it back to Johansson. Been amongst the goals himself lately. It's met by Payado. Hooked away by Eckersley. Down by Beaton. Forrest. Stokes looking for a return. Forrest running to Walker. No, he's not going to get that, James Forrest. I don't think he's ever in a position to get the return ball from Anthony Stokes. Matthews has clipped Walker here, and that's going to be a yellow card for Adam Matthews. Jimmy Walker just too quick for Adam Matthews. Adam Matthews, I think, is making a legitimate attempt to get to the ball, but the half's player's too quick for him. Always getting there a fraction before the, the fullback. We've had a yellow and a red already. Kai takes it. Payado. It's a free kick for Hearts. And really Colin has to step in again here. Now it could be another yellow here for Scott Brown. Could be a busy old afternoon here for Willie Colin. We've only gone 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know if he's got anywhere to, to go there, Scott Brown, as Payado comes in. Again, now this is a, a nice range for Hearts here to get something on target. Turk has proved that he can hit them. It's got a stunner in the Edinburgh derby. Craig Gordon is in the firing line. Is Alim Turk and it flashes wide. Celtic took some height in the wall there, clearly aware of, of this lad's technique. Just tries to outfox Craig Gordon back by going low. Beaton. Here's Stokes. Zagiri's cross. Walker. Ambrose in front of Keatings. Not sure he has to commit to that FA Ambrose, not with the temperature of the game at the moment. Might even better than staying in his feet there. If he missed times that, he could have been walking as well. Everyone is at full throttle at the moment. Frantic opening, which has seen the Hearts captain for the day. Morgaro Gomez, a red carded for a lunge on the Celtic captain. Van Dyke, Johansson, second chance. Matthews, Forrest. It comes to Brown. It's going to slither for a corner. Not one he could take with his right foot there, Scott Brown, that's why he dragged it across. Stuck in between his feet initially. Celtic, as you'd expect, with a numerical advantage, starting to see a lot of the ball here. Stokes to deliver. Away by Holt. Zagire gives it back to Stokes. Zagire. It hadn't been given, is that sure, Yeah, it? I think you're dead right. I'm not sure it had been given. The ball did look out. And Van Dyke clearly thought it was out. <laughs> Zagire makes a really good offer on the outside here. That this pass here is just a little bit heavy. Yeah, it's out. Flag only went up after a dyke had caught it.
Payada. He's fortunate here near Vita and if Willie Corum doesn't go to his pocket, he's fortunate the midfielder. This is totally needless here. It's in a nothing area of the pitch. He, don't know why he's committing to that near beaten. He's let him off. We'll take this throw. It's been typically tenacious so far. His beat on Brown Forrest Beat on Matthews Brown Gidetti Beat on Forrest James Forrest taking the long way around the deflection offers to Never really got hold of it anyway on his left side there, James Forrest. Ambrose with a foul on Keatings. Comes in late there, Ambrose. Keating just stands his ground. I, I don't see an awful lot wrong with that there. It's a ball that the centre back's entitled to go and win. First turn up towards Keating's, but Van Dyke will certainly fancy that. Leado lost out to Stokes. Good cover from Callum Patterson, read the script really early. Gidetti's claiming he was held there, but the fullback did really well to get round. The Matthews having a run in the side of the moment with Mikhail Wustig injured. Ambrose. Virgil van Dijk. Riding a long way, Johansson. Holt. Jason Holt, he, he's the one half player whose position has changed big time through the ordering off. He was given a, a bit of freedom earlier on to go and support. He's going to have to sit though beside Payado. This is the, the moment that mattered here. Gomez coming in from the side. He's left the ground and he's left Willie Collin with no choice. Robbie Nielsen having a look at it on an iPhone here. And I think in the fullness of time he will appreciate that his player made a big mistake there. And again, it's in an area of the pitch that matters very little. It was reckless from Gomez. And Hearts now have to contend with Ronnie Dyler's Celtic with ten men. Patterson will take this throw. Knocked on by James Keatings, but nobody ahead of him. That's that's the problem. With 11, Jason Holt could afford to, to gamble and go beyond Keatings, not so much now. He's got to make sure that central midfield is kept secure. Matthews. Johansson. Um, 
Beaton. Beaton again. Isagire. Dilly King forcing him to go back. By it, bro. Jimmy Walker did well to pinch it, didn't he? Took the pressure off Hearts, gets him up the pitch a little bit. I'm surprised they took it short and back the way. They've invited pressure on themselves again here. Another free kick, Ambrose on Keatings again. Might have been piggyback in there. Again, Ambrose has got to go and win that title. Keating's backing in. Patterson. Alan Patterson will take it. available yet. Tayano provides one. Billy King over there with him. It comes to nothing for Hart. Stefan Johansson. Gidetti has kept it in. Forrest waiting on the edge of the area. Blocked by Patterson. Good break though. Gidetti played on side by Brad Mackay who, who didn't fancy stepping up there and taking his chances. Matthews decided to go for it, but always going wide. Every right to, to take it on, Adam Matthews. No appetite for Hearts to get out to the ball here. Plenty of numbers go side, but nobody getting out. Gordon Strachan went to the games at Dundee and Spartans yesterday, and he's here today. Mind you, he's got nothing to do for a few months, has he? Here's Mackay, obviously advanced, but it's too high for him. Celtic have won their last nine encounters with Hart, scoring 31 goals in those nine games and conceding just two. About as one-sided as it comes. A year ago, they were 5 0 up by half-time here in the Scottish Cup. Times have changed at Tyne Castle. So far, the ten men of hearts are coping. Brown, Gidetti, Forrest, Stokes, Johansson, Izagire. Easy for Alexander. Yeah, very cool from Izagire. Under no pressure at all, good support in the box. He's made it easy for Neil Alexander. Stokes, Beaton, Kinetti, Johansson. Here's Matthews. The flick from Johansson doesn't come off. Be retrieved by Ambrose, who shots it to his captain Brown. Beaton. Van Dyke. Blocked by Payado. Beaton. Johansson. Forrest. Beaton. He decides to go for goal. Ooh, the deflection took it just wide. That's always a worry for Hearts, who, who are defending their 18-yard line at the moment. If, if you sit as deep as that, you're always liable to lose one from a deflection. 
The other problem they have here is that Keating is now so isolated. He's 40 yards ahead of the nearest midfield player. Southwick corner as they look for the opening goal in this Scottish Cup showdown. It's Johansson to take it. Stokes returns it and Virgil van Dijk scores. Celtic a goal up and a man up. They have a firm grip on this cup tie. Terrific ball in from Anthony Stokes with enough pace on it that Virgil van Dijk. If he gets anything on target, there's every chance he scores here if he's either side of Neil Alexander. Stokes, spare at the back, smashes it back into the mix. And Van Dijk just has to open his right foot on it. Using the pace that's already on the ball, Neil Alexander absolutely helpless. I guess it was only a matter of time with Hearts down to ten men. Lashed in by Virgil van Dijk. Celtic a goal to the good at Tynecastle. Castle. This is where hearts have a problem now, you know, one nil down and a man down. I don't think Robbie Nielsen can afford to open up here and, and come on to Celtic, they'll, they'll be picked off. He doesn't want to get strung out here, I can't see this hearts game plan changing. Unless it's deep into the match and they really have to go for it. Forest. Matthews. Brown. Giretti. Jason Holt gets involved for Hearts and gets a free kick. Any respite welcome at the moment for Hearts. Something really turning the screw here. Hearts big problem is getting up the pitch. The only out ball they have at times is Keating's, and if they do knock it up long, if it's too high, he's not going to win too many against Van Dijk and Ambrose. He's got to be knocked up short into his chest or into his feet, but that is easier said than done. Such a costly record in the early minutes for Mogaro Gomez. The standing skipper, hardly leading by example. It's killed the game for Hearts, really. Celtic after another. It's Emilio Izaguirre to deliver, but that's straight at Alexander again. Well, again, he's much better than that, Izaguirre. But as long as Celtic are again a man over on whatever side of the pitch, Juan Dalla would be pretty happy. They're just trying to stretch, perhaps make the pitch as wide as possible here. Izaguirre racing away. James Forrest will actually get to this. Much better ball in from the fullback that time. It's just a little bit high for Forrest. Beats on with another blast straight out, Alexander. If anything, he hit it too well there, New, new Beat on. It's only a second appearance in two months for Beat on. No Charlie Mulgrew. Out with a rib injury, suffered against. Salzburg. So a rare opportunity for the Israeli international. Ambrose here for Piton. Van Dijk. Brown. Forrest. Stokes. Fancy flick didn't come off, but he's hung in there. Seeing off Patterson. Brown. Matthews. Johansson. Well, target. Over ambitious, if you ask me, with. Carlson in so many goals side there. 
this the moment the matter though. Anthony Stokes is clever, you know, the half volley smashed back into the mix. And it's such a good ball for Van Dijk. He just opens his foot on it. To find the inside of the post. Anthony Stokes probably unmarked at the back post because of that sending off. Van Dijk, Brown. Beetle. There's Aguirre hugging the touchline. Stokes over there too. Johansson, Beetle. Feeding Stokes, might get a shot away. And he got a little nudge there from Billy King, just to put him off there, Anthony Stokes. Looked as if he was going to put his foot through this. Billy King just leans in here, enough to distract Stokes just a little bit. haven't scored our first half goal against Celtic in the last 15 meetings between the sides and it's going to be a tall order to manage even an opportunity at the moment Celtic's lead remains a slender one for now but they're working on it Nobody up the pitch at all now. Keating's has come goal side as well. Which is fine in terms of, of staying compact, staying together, but when the possession turns over, there's, there's going to be nothing on for Hearts to get up the pitch. Matthews smuggled that through for Johansson. It's a corner off Mackay. Yeah, we're well blocked there, Brad Mackay. Got out really early to it. for Matthews and again Keating's blocked it Matthews cleverly finding Johansson out by Patterson here's Billy King and there'll be a rare hearts break doesn't look like it Zagire sees off Keating's Stokes searching for Forrest. That graphic doesn't really surprise you, does it? The amount of ball that the Celtic are having. Only Delia will be hoping that can be converted into a second goal. Forrest deflected for a corner. It's very relentless from Celtic. Just having to throw the bodies in front of the shots now, the, the Hearts defenders. Damage limitation at the moment, and it's difficult to know how Hearts change the pattern of this with a man down. Celtic 7-0 up on corners. <laughs> Stokes goes towards that near post, and Virgil van Dijk somehow put it over. How did he miss? How did he miss that? More difficult to put it over the bar from there, it looks. Wow. Not sure how it managed to sneak through the front post. I think Ostuk got a nick on at the front post. Van Dijk can't believe he's missed that. A wry smile on his face, not much else he could do. Just squandering that. There won't be a smile on Ronnie Dyla's face, he'll want the second goal. 
even with a man advantage, 1-0 always a precarious lead to, to protect. No matter how much of the game you're having. Forrest. Johansson for Stokes. Stokes. There's Piano to contend with. Stokes. Good idea. It's the type of run the Celtic are going to require to touch of the two backs of four across their 18 yard line. They need a bit of movement beyond Gudetti. Celtic have only lost once in their last 11 Scottish Cup visits to Tynecastle. And that was way back in 1987, and the legend that is, John Robertson scored the winner. Zagiri. Beat on. Stopped by Jason Hall, but only briefly. Brown. Matthews. One-way traffic. Yeah, I mean, Hearts can't even afford to, to press the ball high up the pitch now. Uh, man down. No choice but to, to sit in. I do think the two centre-backs could try and shorten the game a little bit by, by getting up higher. Game's too long for the midfield at the moment. Brown trying to slide that through for Forrest, stopped by Eckersley. Brown, Matthews. Stokes. Good ball into a decent area as well. Nobody getting round the back. Scott Brown, Matthews kept it in. A beat on. Johansson, Matthews. Forrest, Stokes, Beaton seems determined to shoot today, Matthews' route is blocked. I have the needle stuff for Celtic at the edge of the box. We are with Ronnie Dyler again. Next weekend, it is Motherwell against Celtic, Sky Sports 1, Saturday from 12.30. Colin just having a word with Stephen Finney, the fourth official here, and now he's having a word with Robbie Nilsson. <laughs> you probably got the message. to the sky by Patterson. Alan Patterson, who was called up to the Scotland squad recently. Scored a few goals last season when he played up top. Pretty adept at right back. Virgil van Dijk, who has given Celtic the advantage. Matthews. Johansson. Forrest. And Walker stuck with him. Goal kick. Did really well, Jimmy Walker. 
Given Forrest's pace, he looked favourite to get something across the face of goal here. Good recovery pace from the, the Hearts wide player here. Jamie Walker, whose uh, partner Courtney is due to give birth today. If she could wait a while yet, that would be appreciated. Tony Dyler has taken Celtic through to the group stage of the Europa League despite that defeat to Salzburg on Thursday. And John Guidetti, who was ineligible for the group stage, can now be registered for the knockout phase. Forrest. Beat on. Stokes. Could use Izagire. Does. Guidetti. Forrest. Guidetti. Forest snapshot corner. Over plenty of times, I think Celtic. Too many passes in a, a crowded penalty box. Quidetti has very little room to work in here given the, the amount of maroon shots around the ball. Final minute of the first half. Hearts doing no more than hanging in there at the moment, but a second goal here would be critical. Stokes takes it, too long. Might be trying to score there, Anthony Stokes. It's such good late whipping the ball. We know a significant stoppage time at the end of this first half. Free kick, it's Scott Brown. I'll be surprised if Hearts don't put this in the box. They've really got to make the, the most of any set piece they get. Neither of the, the two centre backs going up, which surprises me. What a waste. It's half time, we're expecting a cracking contest. It was never allowed to become one, really. Willie Collum had to show an early red card to the Hearts. Skipper for the day, Morgaro Gomez for a reckless lunge on Brown. And Celtic assume control with a Virgil van Dijk goal. They haven't been able to add to that mine, but Hearts have been virtually camped inside their own half for the whole half. Half time in this Scottish Cup tie, Hearts nil, Celtic won. Well, Hearts have won eight out of eight in the League and Cup this season. That record is creaking at the moment. A lot to talk about then with the Hibernian manager, Alan Stubbs and Neil McCann. Celta were 5-0 up at half-time when these sides met at the same stage here last year. It's much tighter this time. Analysis is next. It's 1-0 to Celtic at Tyne Castle in the William Hill Scottish Cup. Neil McCann and the Hibs manager Alan Stubbs are with me here. Alan, talk me through the red card. Uh, can you account for this challenge for the Hearts captain? As a manager, no. You know, he's, it's this early in the game. I don't think you've got any complaints whatsoever. Not, not the way the rules of the game are now. You know, as soon as you leave the floor with, with two feet, you run the risk of what happens. And, you know, I, I don't think there's, there's any doubt whatsoever that it was going to be a red card. Was he too pumped up? Could have been. I think he's, he's probably been caught up in the emotions of the game. Um, we've all been there as players. We all, we all get wrapped up in the atmosphere, but that's where you need the cool heads, you know, because now it's just made it massively difficult for Hearts now to, to, to try and get through this time. How have they coped after that? Because it was in the eighth minute. Well, after eight minutes, you go down to ten men and it, it's just going to be waves of attack and Celtic will control the line share of possession. Just keep you... I feel sorry for young Keatings up front because he's running around, he's getting no quality to deal with, even to hold it, and he's only a small guy up against Ambrose and Van Dyke. So the quality at least has to be better, but they've just been pegged back, and sooner or later you think they're going to succumb to something. 
Uh, and the goal itself, and you look at it, I think it's Callum Patterson that's picking up Van Dyke, and he's unlucky, he challenges and he falls, but then he gets attracted to running into areas where he shouldn't be, he should be looking for his man, where is he? It's a total stroke of luck, because Stokes is trying to smash that maybe at goal and hope for a ricochet, he chokes it. But talk about finishing, and, and Alan said it there, he made a lovely little quote, he said, finish is the first one, like a striker, and then he gets a chance later on as, as a defender, but that is, that is a brilliant technique to finish that. It's on the half volley, just bumped in front of him, and it's just stroked away. But um, the red card is crazy. Regardless of what Robbie Nielsen's saying, you can't go two-footed like that. He's left the ground, it's the pace he's coming in at, he's out of control. So regardless if he gets a little touch on the ball, David, you can't challenge that. And it's eight minutes into the game from your captain. And another aspect of that is I think he's looked at who's challenging. Scott Brown, he thinks, I need to go on aggressive here, because Scott will go on aggressive. To send a message and out. He's, and yeah, well, sometimes it's nice to lay down a little marker, but as soon as you go with two feet and it's heels up, Willie Combs always going to show a red there. Now, Van Dijk scored a wonderful striker's goal, Alan, but was this uh, was more like Van Vossen? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're more inclined to see defenders finish like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not doing myself any favours as a fan. Ah, listen, he's got a good well, few years. Years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, to be fair, I don't, I'm, I'm usually clinical from that distance, but <laughs> no, it's, I think, if anything, it's just popped up a little bit and it's maybe caught, come around a bit quicker, but... You know, you, you, you should score. You oh, should score. If it hits, you know, if that hits him, it's anywhere, chest, anywhere, chest anywhere, legs, where they got that? Down below, anywhere, it's in. You know, he's just tried to cushion it in, and if anything, it was he's probably celebrating before he scored. Yeah, I think Hearts need to change it, David. If it was me, I, I, when I go, if, if, if my team was going down to ten men, I'd like to go a three and a four, and at least you can keep two up top and try and get out. Um, but Robbie Nielsen's got decisions to make at half-time. Well, he certainly does, because it's been a tight, physical contest. Remember, Hearts are only trailing by one goal to nil. They scored 24 goals at home already this season. But remember, Celtic have won their last five domestic games and are very much on form. The second half should be great, and it's next. to take it, Stokes returns it, and Virgil van Dijk scores! One out of two ain't bad for Virgil van Dijk this afternoon and later this evening at 5-5 to five on Sky Sports 5, a double header from La Liga Cordoba against Villarreal and then Valencia in fourth welcome Barcelona in second, that's at 8 o'clock that one. Now, can Celtic join Rangers in tomorrow's draw or will Hearts join Hibs? The answer now in the second half of this one in the company of Davy Proven and Ian Crocker. And Celtic's lead is still slender despite their dominance in that first half. Logaro Gomez sent off after just eight minutes and that changed the picture somewhat. Celtic in a huddle at the start of the second half. Hearts haven't been able to show what they can offer it in an attacking sense and they can offer plenty. Celtic start the second half, but they will quite fancy scoring a second to make sure of things. I think the target for Hearts now is to get into the last quarter of the game. A 1-0 down at worst. And then they can have a look. Neil McCann mentioned going to a back three, trying to get another striker on. But first things first, they've got to try and keep the back door locked here and get into the last quarter of a game after that they, they can have a go they're going to have to have a go at some stage his beat on gets it back from Stokes Matthews Forrest Brown trying to fancy flip through to Gadetic need a little bit more composure when they do win possession, even on the edge of their own box, to try and bring Keatings into the game. Beat on. Forrest. Matthews. Away by Mackay. And by Walker, but it'll be collected here by Johansson.
Here's Aguirre. Here's Anthony Stokes. Here's Aguirre. On his right foot. Van Dijk on hand. Poor return there from Brown. Matthews for Forrest. Johansson. Stokes. Van Dijk. Emilio Isak. <laughs> He's a Gary. Another unfortunate slip. He's had loads of opportunities to cross this afternoon. One or two decent balls in, but overall pretty disappointing for a, for a boy who usually wraps his, his foot around it pretty well. Ruben Nelson, who won the Scottish Cup with Hearts as a player, now their head coach. They've only failed to score against Celtic in the League Cup and Dumbarton this season. Just getting far enough upfield is a problem at the moment with ten men. <laughs> Virgil van Dijk. Johansson. Van Dijk, it's actually brought back for a free kick by Willie Collum. Yeah, gave himself a little bit of thinking time there, Willie Collum. Thought there might have been an advantage for Hearts in letting it go. Here comes Celtic again with Anthony Stokes showing some urgency. Gidetti now. Able to help it on to Forrest. Better ball up to Keating's needs help here. Now you wouldn't want his, his role on the side right now. He's playing against the two Celtic centre backs on his own. Most of the service is, is coming up six feet high in the air, which he's not going to win. And as long as the two hearts centre backs keep him drop it, dropping as deep as they are at the moment, they're going to find it really hard to get any support up to the striker. First starts in September as well for James Keatings, against his former club. Cadetti. Fouled by Forrest on Patterson, who wasn't letting him pass. He's clever, Callum Patterson. I think he knows he's going to get off with that in the box, maybe outside the box. He'd have been penalised for that. And also how quick James Forrest is, just blocks him off. Hearts unbeaten in eight matches since they lost at Celtic in the League Cup in September. They've won seven of those and drew an Edinburgh derby. Scott Brown, near beat on, starting in the absence of the injured Charlie Mulgrew. Forrest, Gidetti, Johansson, Gidetti. It's a penalty, Willie Collin had to think about that and pointed to the spot. Got a bit of what to do here now, Willie Collin, as it kicks off. Brad McKay not happy at all, he was, he was penalised. Big call here. Gudetti's clever, it looked as if he was going to pull the trigger on his right foot. Check back onto his left. Was he clipped? That's the only question here. Will he, will he call him? I'm not sure whether he got advice from the assistant on the far side who's looking in on that or whether he made the decision on his own. Brad Mackay tried to uh, leave the scene of an apparent crime. He gets a yellow, as does Johansson. Gudetti looked as if he was going to hit it. Oh, no. 
Kai okay, going with it, his left foot here. Oh, there's absolutely no contact here for me. That is really harsh on Hearts. Gidetti will take the penalty. And he scores emphatically to rub it in. Celtic have a 2 0 lead. They're sitting pretty. Yeah, a long way back for, for Hearts now. If Robbie Nielsen has can have no complaints about the Gomez red card, they, they'll certainly have plenty to say about this. Emphatic penalty by Gudetti, just closes his foot on it. To put it inside the left-hand post. But a real sore one for Hearts when their penalty is awarded for this. There's no contact there at all. Whether Gudetti loses his footing or whether he deliberately goes down, only he knows. But it's never a penalty. It's 11 goals in his last 10 matches for John Gudetti. But it's so cruel on Hearts. Patterson. And his left foot, miserable. Difficult to see where Robbie Nielsen goes from here now. Well, no wonder Brad Mackay was fuming. He got a yellow card. And Hanson, too, for getting involved in the melee. Huge decision that has gone totally against Hearts. Brown. Stokes! Finds the bottom corner. Celtic cruising into the next round now. Terrific finish from Anthony Stokes. Thing you could argue that Hearts could have got out to the ball quicker here. Billy King maybe closest to Anthony Stokes, but he got the shot away so quickly. Not sure you can blame Neil Alexander here. He's tucked inside that far post. Just recycle the ball here, Celtic. Well, does it go through the, the legs of Osterk there on the edge of the box? Either way, Neil Alexander is left helpless, not for the first time today. Underneath the, the right foot of Oster. And Celtic, after 55 minutes, just about out of sight. A penalty that never was, and a goal from a former hip striker. Now that is rubbing it in. Two goals in less than two minutes for Celtic. The Hearts will certainly have plenty to say about that penalty decision. And no wonder. Well, we thought we were in for a captivating cup tie here, but an eighth-minute red card for Gomez pretty much ensured that that wouldn't happen. Now Celtic have got the goals to go with their domination. Walker. Quick kick for Hearts. Scott Brown will be summoned to Willie Collum now. Not a tackle he has to make there, Scott Brown in the, the corner. Perfectly positioned. Well, Jamie Walker's got nowhere to go there. Just giving Hearts a chance to put it in the box. Alexander Tonev and Prince Dwaban will be joining us from the respective benches soon.
It's Walker to send it in. Deton sent it out. Johansson. Payada able to tuck that away from Gidetti. Celtic are going to take off James Forrest and bring on the Bulgarian on loan from Aston Villa, Alexander Tonev, who made his first appearance for a month as a sub against Salzburg, and he's coming on here. In each game, James Forrest still trying to get up to speed. It's been a frustrating afternoon for him. Not happy, he's been withdrawn here. Celtic's work will have to come from the, the full backs now. Beat on. Matthews. Brown. Take it for Hearts. Scott Brown in and about them again and on a final warning. Again, Scott is entitled to go to go for the Scott Brown. Not the tape he's going to pull it off. Hearts are making a change now. We'll see the departure of Jason Holt. And the arrival of Prince Flavin, who won the Scottish Cup with Dundee United alongside Bulgaro Gomez in 2010. <laughs> Heatings. Let it go for Johansson. Johansson stopped in his tracks. Free kick for Hart, Brown the offender again. Thought it was good pressure from Scott Brown there. Again, Hart's wasteful with the ball out from the back though. Stokes steered away by Mackay. afternoons for is the gear isn't it but it's all come down that left side through from Celtic most of the service into the box has come from that side very little from the right today and what do you think about tonight Robbie Nielsen but there's no question he's he's got to be critical of, of Gomez who's sending off, changed the whole complexion of this. The draw for the next round of the Scottish Cup is tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock on Sky Sports News. Rangers put their place in it earlier by beating Kilmarnock. Celtic heading into that draw to Gidetti. It's a corner. Still half an hour to go. So they're attacking the end where over 3,000 of their fans are housed and they'd like to see a few more goals. They've taken some really good corners to the Celtic from, from Stokes and Johansson either side. comes the corner, and Van Dijk has scored again, goal number four for Celtic. Another good delivery from Johansson, but it's far too easy for Van Dijk, is it not? Not sure who he runs off here, but it's far too easy, six yards out in the middle of the six-yard box. Can't quite believe he's getting that run. He's done his job, though. 
gets it down onto the target. And still the best part of half an hour to go. Celtic won 7 0 here a year ago. They're up to four. With time for more. And that was the cue for many Hearts fans to leave already. Billy King. Walker. Looks like Patterson in here. Beat on to contend with. Just didn't get his head up there, Jimmy Walker. He's, he's got options on his right hand side. But I think if you offered Robbie Nielsen full time right now, he would take it. 4 0 is, is heavy enough. He, he doesn't want to take a real drubbing here. Stuck. Celtic are going to bring on Lee Griffiths. He'll get a good welcome, won't he? And Chris Commons. So Griffiths and Commons waiting there to come on. Well, Walker, smothered by Gordon. Good effort, did well to, to make the opportunity for himself, just shifted it quickly away from Scott Brown. And we hear that uh, Anthony Stokes and Stefan Johansson will make way for the two subs, Griffiths and Commons, next break of play. Both of whom will be fancying getting on the score sheet. Gidetti. It's a painful afternoon for Hart. Certainly Mogaro Gomez must be kicking himself for that daft early challenge. Yeah, and, yeah, now is the time to think about it. They've beaten themselves up, I'm sure. Touch soon, baby. I think. <laughs> Johansson, Stokes. He's a gear it. Passes galore. Griffiths and Commons still waited to come on whilst Celtic spray these passes around. Stokes. Van Dyke, he's a gear available. Stopped by Billy King. Nobody up the pitch for Hutz. Keating's trying to get himself forward now, but that type of ball forward really is no good to him. <laughs> They're getting a bit fed up now. <laughs> They've been there for a few minutes. Keatings shadowed here by Ambrose. Walker. Wabin. Slot. Time to take a touch here, Callum Patterson. Too big a hurry. At last. 
last. Lee Griffiths and Chris Commons are going to see some action. Anthony Stokes has got in on the act with a fine finish. And he's going to be replaced here. Lee Griffiths has scored it in his last two visits to Tyne Castle with Celtic and with Hibs. He might fancy another. Stefan Johansson makes way for Chris Commons, who has scored six goals in his last five matches against Hearts. So not really the two guys that Hearts wanted to see coming on for the final quarter. Sharpish. Yeah, I did well to get her as quickly as he did there. Tonev switching to the, the left here, Griffiths playing right. Hans are going to make a change now. Tony Walker is coming off. He's going to be replaced by 18-year-old Robbie Buchanan, who's come on as a sub in a couple of championship games recently. And there he is, waiting to make only his fourth appearance for Hearts. He's actually on the books of Rangers as a very young lad before joining Hearts at the age of 13. It's been one tough shift for Hearts, this. Still a bit left in it as well. You know, another 22, 23 minutes of this left. I worry for, for Robbie Nielsen would be going so well in the league that what this would do for the confidence. Goal kick, Keatings is after more. He's a good convinced decision is the right one he was. He's calm. Top Commons. Here's Brown. Seems to brush Tomev's hand. And now he's taken out by Ozturk. In fact, advantage played by Willie Cole. I think that's frustration in Ozturk's part there. He felt he should have had a free kick. And it did appear to strike Tony from the arm. He's going to have a word with Colin now with Alim Ozturk. Well, he's not within playing distance of the ball, is he? Into the last 20 minutes. Tonev, offside against Griffiths. This game came too soon for Danny Wilson at the front there, the Hearts captain recovering from a hamstring injury, and Sufian El Hasnawi missing out today with an ankle injury, and Osman So also absent, the uh, top scorer. But after that red card for Gomez, we'll never yeah. know what kind of challenge yeah, Hearts could have mounted. It's all left spots and maybes. Brown. He's a gear it. Pushed it past Billy King. Dispatched by Patterson. It's 
Celtic heading for 10 wins in a row against Hearts. 35 goals in those 10 matches as well. There might be more yet. Brown. Zagiri. Tonev. Gunetti. Eckersley made sure it didn't quite carry to Griffiths. Buchanan. And I, Gidetti, Brown, stopped by Eckersley. Now Keatings, only Ambrose back for now, Van Dyke trying to get there, Ambrose did his job. Did really well, Ambrose, to, to stop it coming across there. Celtic caught really short. One of the rare times in the match that Hearts have looked threatening. Held up by Gidetti. Griffiths got that wrong. It's been a lot more comfortable than he might have imagined. Turned out a good day at the office for him, hasn't it? Not a lot managers can do, though. I'm talking about Robbie Nielsen here when, when Gomez makes a, a challenge like that. It's just made it impossible to get support up alongside Keatings. That was Jason Holt's initial role, but after the sending off, he had to drop in. Patterson's cross. With Van Dyke. Wants the cross stop, doesn't he? Celtic strolled past Hearts in this competition a year ago, but went out in round five to Aberdeen. Beaton, Commons, Gidetti. Beaton. Griffiths. Matthews. Commons. Alexander claims it. Football, but they can uh, focus on the main job in hand for this season. Promotion back to the top flight. Nine points clear at the top from Rangers. Tonne. Giretti. Should do better. I've got loads of support as well. Celtic have their game in hand against Spotted Fish in the midweek and then. We are with them again at Motherwell next Saturday, 12.30 on Sky Sports 1. James Keating's down here, I think it's cramped and it's hardly surprising given the amount of ground he's, he's had to cover. Scott Robertson at 22, one of the uh, more established players here. He's going to come on for his first appearance in over two months. Oh, that's an ankle problem for, for Keating's. 
we just have to get on with it today. I mean, hopelessly outnumbered. Service has been really poor. But uh, he's chased all the lost causes up there on his own. He'll be more gutted than most facing his former club. It goes his red card, never really allowed him to make the contribution that he would have wished. And now he's limping off, which kind of sums up his day. It was a full-on task handed to James Keatings. Scott Robinson, a Scottish Cup winner with Hart in 2012, comes on. Final change for Hart. Sounds like they've used all theirs too. Kedetti, lovely flick. Tonev takes over now. He's had a look in the middle. Griffiths and Commons are both there. Tonev decided to go for it. Spilled by Alexander. And the free kick has been given against Chris Commons. It won't count. Relief for Neil Alexander. Linesman's on his way to the halfway line. He's convinced it's a goal. This is Willie Collins' call all day long here. Love a little reverse from Gudetti to get Tonev in. Had a thing about the support arriving at the back post, but opened the target up nicely for himself. Uh, for me, that's a spill by the goalkeeper. A little bit fortunate to get away with that, I think. Probably should have been number five. Chris Commons scored a hat-trick in that 7-0 drubbing here a year ago. Beat on Matthews. Scott Brown, who scored twice in that uh, 7 0 game, who was well advanced there. Good pressure on the ball. You know, 4 0 up, Celtic still hounding hearts. Gidetti bounces off. Was Turk and away by Eckersley. Yeah, they didn't give. Uh, Payado, much room to breathe there. Here's Boavin. The cannon. Slip here from Ambrose. Billy King alongside. The cannon decided to go for goal himself. Decent effort, isn't it? He's got a pass on his right hand side, but once he gets in there, he's got to take the shot on. Wonder if Craig Gordon's getting across here. We'll, we'll see, should see from this angle. More than decent effort. Sonev. Gidetti. Aguirre under pressure from Billy King, it is going to be a free kick to stop it. He's fucked in at the full back. That's just look as if they want out of town now, don't they? Shoulders are slumped, body language says it all. Brown over to Matthews. Gidetti trying to flick again. Robinson needs help from Alexander. It came at him at a fair pace. Beat on. Villado. Ambrose flying through the air. Here's Van Dijk. Patterson. And by Tuesday night, half of the Scottish Premiership will be out of the Scottish Cup. Might be a few clubs fancying their chances, but Celtic 
will be the hot favourites. Lovin turned into Commons. Good pressure again, though. It's much easier to pressurise when you've got an extra man, but Celtic's attitude this second half has been spot on. Tom Air for Van Dyke. The cannon, Robin. Billy King, very nowhere fast. Robin. Rolls it through to Patterson. Tired cross, isn't it? Really tired cross. The cannon has uh, kept it in. Routine for Craig Gordon. Vito. Matthews. Commons. Beaton. I don't think he appreciated that at this stage in the game there. Matthews wanted it in the feet. What well, a concern for Ronnie. Dyla now would be picking up an injury that he doesn't doesn't need. 4-0 down. The opposition are never best pleased. If they get a chance to leave one on you, they will. Beaton. That's it back from Tonev. Tonev. Griffiths. Commons. Brown. Kept in by Matthews. <laughs> the other gifts Celtic a throw. Oh, the deflection! Just wide as Lee Griffiths had a go from distance with his own man then. Got plenty on it, Lee Griffiths, didn't he? Couldn't have struck it any cleaner. Was it Scott Brown who came off? Terrific strike. That's yeah, the skipper who comes off. Final five minutes. I'll be delighted to hear that whistle. <laughs> Over 3,000 Celtic fans enjoying their day out in Edinburgh. They've not had much to worry about. Giretti. Beaton. Giretti. Griffiths can have another go. Same place. Keen to get one at Town Castle, isn't he? Another one. Every look he gets a goal, he wants to put his foot through. Oh, 
Let's see him again next week in the championship. Intriguing game against Queen of the South. Probably wishing he stayed in his bed, isn't he? Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Patterson. Foul by Patterson on Beaton. Hart's merely waiting for Willie Collum's final whistle of the day. Long things beaten, beaten from the eighth minute, really, when Morgaro Gomez was sent off. A really rash challenge. Here's Robinson, the cannon to his left, King to his right, Eckersley arriving. We well, had a thing about putting it in the box, Eckersley, but no real physical presence in that area, Hearts. Tom Ev. Straight through to Alexander. Guaban. Commons. Griffiths, Ambrose. Comments. Leonardo took it off him. Yeah, good tackle. Final minute of the 90. Reminder that the draw for the next round of the Scottish Cup is at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and you can see it live on Sky Sports News. Hearts will be delighted to learn that there'll only be two minutes of stoppage time. You've just got to pick them up uh, again tomorrow, remind them of, of how well they've done so far this season. And remind them how the, the Gomez tackle changed their, the complexion of the match as well. to focus on the championship for Hearts and that nine-point lead that they have over Rangers. That is their ultimate target promotion back to the top flight, relegated last season for only the fourth time in their history. After a 15-point deduction. If they can't complain about Gomez's red card, then certainly they will about that penalty early in the second half, which led to three quick goals. Not that the outcome has really ever been in doubt. Griffiths.
Cummins, Brown, Beaton. Commons over towards Kidetti. Brown trying to sneak in. Robinson. Well, it promised to be some contest, but it became no contest after Morgaro Gomez was sent off in the eighth minute. Only Dale Celtic took charge. They only scored once in that first half, though, through Virgil van Dijk. He got the fourth as well in between. Anthony Stokes came up with a fabulous finish. John Guidetti scored a controversial penalty after he went to ground. Hearts never really able to show what they could do after that early red card. And it was a stroll, really, for Celtic to advance into the next round in an easier fashion than they thought it might be here at Tyne Castle, a match that was never really allowed to develop into a showdown. It finishes, Hearts nil, Celtic four. Well, the Celtic players are going to milk this one. <coughs> All linked together. And why not? They are through to the draw for the fifth round of the William Hill Scottish Cup, even Ronnie Dial is out there. And remember that draw is live on Sky Sports News HQ. I'll be on there at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon with that one. That's 10 wins in a row for Celtic against Hearts. And Hearts have scored just two goals in those 10 games. Hearts unbeaten home record's gone as well after eight strict victories at home in the League and Cup this year. It's not nine, Ronnie Dial is men get the victory but but there will be a lot to talk about after this one two wins today for both our win for both halves of the old firm rangers beat kilmarnock 3-0 earlier we'll hear from their managers and see those goals again shortly and now celtic have joined the other half of the old firm in the hat for the draw Find some more live football on Sky Sports today. Super Sunday is on air right now with Tottenham against Alan Stubbs, former side Everton. And now on Sky Sports 5, it's PSV Eindhoven, who are on top in the Dutch Air Division against Feyenoord, who are currently third. The views of that man, Alan Stubbs, Hibs manager, and Neil McCann to come. We'll also be gathering the views of both managers, I imagine. The Robbie Nielsen will have a lot to say. Earlier, Rangers get three, Celtic at four, both are in the fifth round draw. Stay with us for reaction. The Premiership leaders against the Championship leaders turned on a red card in only eight minutes. The heart skipper sent off. Thereafter, Celtic took control. It was 1-0 at halftime. That goal came from Virgil van Dijk. Then in the second half, controversy. A penalty kick awarded to John Gadetti. He scored it, and it was game over at that stage. The third goal followed from Anthony Stokes. Van Dijk scored a second again from a corner kick. And Celtic are through. Let's hear from the man of the match. It's Scott Brown. He's alongside Virgil van Dijk, talking to Luke Shanley. Scott Virgil, well done. Scott, from your point of view, sum up today's performance. Uh, I think it was top class. I think uh, from the first minute to the last, uh, we've done everything we asked uh, we wanted to do and we, we got the ball down. We played some great football and some great goals as well for the big man. You were involved in, in that challenge, Gomez, on, on yourself. Talk us through it from your point of view. Um, I just seen the big man coming through, won the ball, but I didn't think it was that bad, to be perfectly honest. Uh, at the time, I just kind of got up and thought it was maybe a booking, but the ref sent him off, so... He must have done something, I couldn't really see it. Virgil, from your point of view, two goals, sum up your afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, definitely. Um, yeah, 4 0 here, it's great. Uh, a little bit like last year. So the red card helped us a little bit, but uh, we were confident that we got a, got a good result today and yeah, we, showed, uh, we showed our class and keep the ball well, score, score some good goals. So, uh, after all, it's a, it's a great, great afternoon. 
You scored two goals. Should you have scored three? <laughs> Should I have? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I didn't expect the ball and there was a little bit of bounce in it, but uh, there's no excuse for that. Uh, it should be a goal, but I score. Uh, I think the second goal was, uh, was was a good one as well. Well, you scored two, but the captain is a William Hill man of the match. Can you hand over the champagne, please? Congratulations, mate. Cheers, big man. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Cheers, lads. I'm glad that uh, Scott Brown called him big man there because that was quite a high difference, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it was. I think Brunie might have been sitting down. Uh, well, despite Scott Brown saying there that he didn't think there was too much in that challenge, um, would you disagree with that? I, I mean, every time you look at it, it seems to get worse. Doesn't it? It's not a good challenge. You know, I think in today's game, as soon as you, as I said before, attempt to leave the ground with, with two feet, then I think you're going to get a red card more often than not. Um, you know, when he's look, when he's going off, he realizes what he's done. You know, you see him now. You start. Scott, it speaks for itself. Scott says in the interview he's not too bothered. <laughs> he gets up pretty quick, and he's. I think he was alarmed at how quick Gomez comes in, but it's, he's out of control. Uh, he can't challenge at that, and, and he's let his team down very badly today. If that didn't turn the game, did the penalty at the start of the second half really kill off Hearts? Was this in any way a penalty? No, it wasn't a penalty. You know, he's, he's he's cut back with the ball, and there's no contact whatsoever. And you know, the referees decided to give a penalty. You know, we've we've seen the replays. We weren't too sure when it was when it was actually given. We thought maybe the linesman would give it because there seemed yeah. to be a pause in between before he made the decision. Um, but when you look at the the slow mo's now. You know, there's no I'm, contact I'm, whatsoever. No, I'm sorry. There's nothing brings John Gadetti down other than himself. And Willie Collum Did he dive back. then? Well, he's thrown himself down, he's conned the referee. And then when Willie Collum sees this later on, I think he'll be furious that he's been done because, look there, there's no contact, no contact, there, he's just dived down. And to be honest, I looked at John Gadetti's reaction and it was a half-hearted attempt. There was no, look, throwing the hands up, that's a penalty, look at him. He's no bothered because he knows he's thrown himself down and, he, and, he, and he's conned a, a penalty. So that is the reaction of the player. And Willie Colm, when he sees it, he bought a little bit of time, actually, yeah. Willie Colm. He didn't dive in and just be rash. He, 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 he calculated it and gave the penalty, and that absolutely killed the game totally. Do you think there will be retrospective action taken against him by the FA, as there was for Borichter in the game at St Johnson, which we did earlier in the season? Well, I don't know, but Hearts will be very disappointed by it. Um, Alan said it's not a penalty, there's no contact to, to bring the player down. He, he's, he's done that himself. Um, but ultimately, you know, whether that's a penalty, whether it's a dive, whether it isn't, Gomez getting sent off has killed the game for Hearts. Yeah. They've sat in there and Robbie had, could have changed it at half-time. He didn't. He tries to stick with his plan and I think they were always going to succumb to more goals. But that's a sore one to get a second one like that, I tell you. And with ten goals already this season for Celtic, was there ever any doubt when Gretti stood up? It's in, from, from, from as soon as the, the sending off goes off, uh, goes, it was a very dominant performance from Celtic. Yeah, you know they they bossed it from from that minute. It was a huge turning point in the game. You know Celtic really showed the class at times, and they controlled it from from that minute of the red card to the last minute of the game. You know they, I've got to say there was big decisions in the game which changed it, but they were very impressive. The Hearts fans and fans of teams from out with Glasgow say that the old firm clubs always get results or get decisions like that. And they, you, know, you suggest it yourself ahead of a game at Ibrox. Is, is that the way it is for the, the old firm? Do they get the rub of the green in these situations? Um, I didn't when I played. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, it's got, I'm going to be something that's labelled at the old firm teams all the time. You know, I think if you, what you have to do is that you, when you've got a game plan, you have to stick to it and, and go for it. You, know, you have to be, try and be as positive as you can against the old firm teams. If you sit back, it's only a matter of time before mm -hmm. they're going to create chances and carve you open. And we've seen that today. Yes, the sending off changes the game, but I thought some of the Celtics' movements, their interlinking, their intelligence was, was, was right up there. As it often is, you have to say that about Celtic. But it was the Van Dyke show for much of this game. What did you think of the way that Hearts defended against that big fella? Put yeah, it set well, I just want to point something out because Hearts have gone zonal and picking up. Now, if I just stop the play and highlight, that is Adam Eckersley. He picks up Van Dyke throughout the match. 
And Patterson, I have to apologise to Callum Patterson because I thought it was him that was picking up Van Dyke. But watch Callum Patterson, he goes to the attack and Eckersley just switches off and it was a theme of the match. He doesn't go with Van Dyke, he doesn't go and try and challenge and let Callum Patterson go and challenge. He drops off and because of that, Van Dyke becomes free. Now if you're picking him up, you have to stay with him. Look at this again as the ball comes in. Adam Eckersley has Van Dyke and then we roll on. A ball watches there, it gets done with a little bit of movement, freezes, and that should be a goal. I know a big man's laughing after the game, but it should be. Again, the third one, he's watching Van Dyke coming in, he sees him, hearts have gone zonal in the six yard box. There, a little bit of movement, gone, punished. And you can't do that now. You're either a zonal lover or you're not. And Robbie's actually going both there, zonal and picking up. But I would much rather maybe a Patterson or an Ostock to go and get Van Dyke. Van Dyke is the biggest, most dangerous threat Celtic have at set pieces. And Adam Eckersley's on him. I don't understand it. Perhaps uh, a payback time for last week when, of course, Kevin McHattie was injured in that game against Rangers. He was the man who dropped out and uh, Eckersley was his deputy today. Now, Anthony Stokes uh, got on the scoring action for Celtic. He set up one of those goals for Van Dijk earlier. Um, what did you think of this goal, Alan, and the defending of it? It's, it's a tough one for the goalkeeper, uh, the Stokes goal, because it, it goes through bodies yeah. and it's back across them. So it's a difficult one for, for him. Um, you know, the patient with the build-up play, the working on opportunity, the, the clever. It goes through bodies. You know, I, I think it's a difficult one now for the keeper to try and say he should have done better. You know, he's, he's picked the corner. It's a great finish, to be honest. Now, Ronnie Dyler will not be a happy man after that. Let's hear from him now. He's with Luke Shanley. Ronnie, well done. What did you make of the game today? Ah, it was a good performance of us. Uh, of course, it, uh, the the game changed when uh, when you get uh, play against ten men, of course. But I think we did uh, did that very well. We kept the ball, and uh, Hodge didn't have nothing, um, and we created the chances we needed and, uh, and won the game uh, in a good way. Virgil Van Dijk with two goals. Sum up his afternoon, and also your captain who was in here as well. What about Scott Brown? Uh, it's, uh, it's getting better and better now. You know, he had had a. Injury for a long time, so uh, now it's starting to get back in the uh, when we what we uh, know uh, Bruni can do. So um, it was unbelievable the second half against uh, Salzburg today as well. He just kept on going, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future. There seemed to be a lot of togetherness at the end. Tell us about that celebration. Well, I think it's uh, as I said, we have to uh, appreciate the supporters. I know it's unbelievable what the, uh, what the noise they are giving or the support we give us. So. To, to build a connection is unbelievably important, and um, we did it today. Every time we win, it's very easy. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, the Celtic supporters uh, to our left were absolutely awesome today. No doubt about it. Fantastic noise throughout the afternoon. Made all the more easy, I suppose, by that early red card. But Celtic gave their fans a show. And does he look as though he's beginning to grow into this job now, Ronnie Dyla? I would say so. You know, to come into the, a job as big as Celtic, you know, is, is a huge task, especially with, you know, what was labelled at him at the start because no one had really heard too much about him. Um, he's, come, he's come in and he's, he's finding his feet, he's, he's growing into the stature of the club, you know, which is, a, is one of the biggest clubs in, in Europe. You know, there's no doubt about that uh, from a fan base point of view. You know, so it was never going to be easy for him, but, you know, you don't have to look at the form now of, the, of recent games. You know, they're, they're, in, they're, they're getting better and better. What did we learn about Rangers today, the other half of the old firm, Neil, in our earlier game? Yeah, what we learned is a, a team that is, is, is built on uh, Premiership experience has come through. When, when they, they're better, I think, when they go a, a goal up and then that you can see the real experience and know-how kick in. Kamarnock, very disappointing, five games defeated uh, on the bounce now and at times over the, the Masters of their own down, downfall. But Rangers, when they're going, uh, Alan McCoy has continued to play with the 4-4-2 uh, and gone long to John Daly. You know, he'll, he'll then say, right, OK, it's vindicated because I've just beaten a Premiership side. Both old firms teams through into the next draw. So, congratulations to Ali McCoy. So let's hear from the two managers at that rangers Kilmarnock game there with, uh, Luke Shant uh, with Mark Benstead. Ali, congratulations. You're through to the next round. After a difficult week, how pleased are you with the response from the players? I thought the, the, the response to the disappointment of last week was first class. Um, <clears throat> I don't think anybody would grudge us a victory. Certainly deserved it. 
thought we scored some good goals along the way. On uh, commiserations, what did you make of your team's performance today? No, I don't think there's any excuses. It was a really poor performance. Uh, didn't seem to be a lot of belief there, and that was a disappointing factor. To what extent did you remind people there's a bit of quality in this side as well? Well, I think you saw it. I mean, I, I definitely think you saw it today. Um, as I say, wonderful finishes, a couple of terrific finishes from, from Nicky Law. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I thought Ian Black in you know, particular did what we asked of him in the first half. Uh, and as I said, without naming individuals, we were just delighted. It was an overall team performance was great with, with uh, some you know, scattered with some very, very good individual performances within that. A lack of belief, you mentioned it, with no tempo. What, what do you put, put that down to? It's hard to put your finger on it, probably confidence after the last few results. Um, so it's really disappointing, especially when your fans turn up in so many numbers. Um, we really let them down today. Yeah, it's a bad day for Kilmarnock, that's for sure. But that's it from our five-hour special. Thanks to Neil. Thanks to you, Alan. No, we'll see you pleasure. on uh, December the 27th yeah. when Rangers against Hips is live. Before that, though, Motherwell v Celtic is our next offering from Scotland in the Premiership. That's at 12.30 on Sky Sports 1. Later on Sky Sports 2, a double header from the NFL. And I'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock on Sky Sports News HQ for the Scottish Cup draw. Both halves of the old firm are through. Goodbye for the present. On all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.